It's like all whatever, man. Bells is a kind of bell. <laughs> it's a malleted instrument, anyway. <laughs> we'll say that. Happy belated. When we were doing, when we first started a group, like we were doing like a lot of like bell stuff and stuff like that. I was just like, I was just like, you know, like in the basement with our little wedding singer somewhere. Like, why don't the kids look at it and play? Like it's just to a person, yeah. it is 100 percent the band. It is the hardest thing we can play. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning with St. Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Matt. I'm glad you're joining us this morning. We've got a great morning of worship um, that we're going to be part of. The band's here to lead us. Rich, Elise, Curtis, and Helen are going to lead us in some great music this morning, and we're thrilled that they're here to, to lead us as we worship together. As we gather for worship, I want to invite you to, uh, to, to fully participate in whatever ways you feel comfortable. Sing, stand for scripture, light a candle that reminds you of God's presence and spirit in your midst. Uh, text a friend that you haven't seen or thought about in a little while and say hello. Uh, offer a greeting and pass the peace of Christ to those that you need to reach out to. As we worship, we know that we're gathered together as God's people to continue to offer to God our lives and our spirits and to be filled with God's presence. Uh, let's sing together as the band starts to lead us this morning.
Amen. Let's pray together this morning. Would you join me as we offer our prayers to God? Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty and for the ways that we see your presence at work in the world. We thank you for the ways that you reveal yourself time and time again, and for the ways that you demonstrate your rule and reign, your love and compassion that continues to work among us and continues to bring us hope and healing. We pray that we might know God's goodness more deeply. We pray that in this season, we might know the goodness that surrounds us, that we might be deeply aware and open to your presence, that we might be surrounded by the love and the grace that you offer. We might pray that we, we pray that we might feel that in a very real and deep way. We pray this morning for teachers, for school staff, and administrators, parents who wrestle with difficult decisions. We know that there are no easy answers in these times. And so we pray that your wisdom and grace would guide the decisions that must be made. We pray that your grace and love would sustain and keep. We pray that we as your church 
might best support those in our community in the ways that we can. We continue to pray for your work to be done as you bring forth healing and work in our land in powerful ways. We pray for those who suffer from sickness or grief or trouble this morning. We think of those in our congregation who are uh, suffering from illness. We think of Stella and Don. We pray that you might draw close and offer your healing and your presence and your power. We pray for Trish and Christina and all of Brett's family as they continue to mourn his passing. We pray that you might surround them with your with your comfort and your care and your compassion. We pray for the family of Alan Sharp, that they might know your comfort as well. We celebrate this morning with Nicholas and Dominique on the birth of Amelia. We give you thanks for new life and for the ways that you continue to bring forth life into our world. We offer you these prayers as well as the prayers that we carry in our hearts for ourselves and others. In these moments, we offer our prayers to you, asking that you might bring healing and restoration, asking that you might bring peace and hope to those that we love who need to know your presence. We offer you all these prayers in the name of Jesus who continues to be at work among us and who continues to show us the goodness of God. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you uh, take a moment, and I want to share some announcements, announcements with you this morning. We'd invite you to check in this morning. Let us know that you're watching online. You'll see a, a link on the screen, bit.ly slash suncrestum. That's a great way to communicate with Pastor Mike or I and the church staff. Uh, it's a great way to let us know that you're present, and we would appreciate it if you would take a moment and uh, fill out that link and go to that, uh, go to that survey and let us know that you're here. We also want to invite you to, to leave a note or a comment in the, the YouTube chat. It's always helpful and great to see uh, folks. It's a great way to connect with each other. So uh, say hello, leave a comment. If there's a way that we can pray for you and you want others to pray for you as well, you can leave that in the, in the YouTube chat and we'd be happy to do that. Uh, we want to let you know that, that this coming week on Wednesday, The Well is our uh, contemplative prayer and praise gathering that Pastor Mike leads. It's a simple contemplative prayer and praise gathering that meets online. And you could, uh, you could join that. It's a great opportunity to restore and refresh your soul uh, with some simple practices of prayer and contemplation. Uh, you can send him an email if you'd like more information about that or if you'd like to join. Our youth are meeting this evening via Zoom. If you'd like to join them, you can reach out to Miss Yvonne and she'll get you some information about uh, how to join them on Zoom. And our children meet on Wednesdays on Zoom to, to check in with each other and to say hello. Again, you can reach out to Miss Yvonne and uh, she'll give you the information about that as well. Uh, we're, going to, we're collecting uh, school supplies for Scott's Run Settlement House as we prepare to go back to school. They're filling lots and lots of backpacks, over 200 backpacks of school supplies for students in our county. And so if you'd like to, to be a part of that, you can visit their website and see the list of things that they need. Or you can uh, mail a check to them, and they will put that to good use as they continue to reach out to folks in our community and offer the love of Christ. We invite you to join with them. Uh, if you haven't downloaded the bulletin, you can do that. It's in the, the chat section of the YouTube, the description of the YouTube. We would invite you to uh, take the bulletin out and see the other information that's there as well. This morning, we're going to continue to offer our tithes and offerings to God. We would invite you to do that using the Venmo, the Venmo app. That's how I'll do it this morning. Uh, we would invite you to, to use the Venmo app, or you can use our church website, suncrestumc.org, and go to the Giving Center. Or you can mail a check, uh, and the, the address is 479 Van Voris Road, Morgantown, West Virginia, 26505. We so appreciate the ways that you have continued to support the work of the church as we continue to join together and announce God's reign in our community at this time. Uh, let's offer our tithes and offerings to God as the band offers us uh, this song and this offertory this morning. do this. 
this again with piano. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Yay. Okay. Sorry. Forget everything you just saw. <laughs> Show us the love of God. Sister, son, you bring out the day we shine in the light. God on your face today. That was really hard, and they did a great job. <laughs> they made that look really easy, and it was not really easy. So thank you to the praise team for that. That was awesome this morning. <laughs> the uh, scripture this morning is from Exodus chapter 35. We begin with verse 30. There's two really hard names in here, but it's not anything like they just did. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> then Moses said to the Israelites, See... The Lord has called by name Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with divine spirit, with skill, intelligence, and knowledge in every kind of craft. 
to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood in each and every kind of craft. And he has inspired him to teach both him and Oholiab, son of Ahasamach of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skill to do every kind of work done by an artisan or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen or by a weaver, by any sort of artisan or skilled designer. Bezalel and Oholiab and every skillful one, skillful one to whom the Lord has given skill and understanding to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. Moses then called Bezalel and Oholiab and every skillful one to whom the Lord has given skill, everyone whose heart was stirred to come do the work. And they received from Moses all the free will offerings that the Israelites had brought for doing the work of the sanctuary. They still kept bringing them free will offerings every morning so that all the artisans who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came each from the task being performed and said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for doing the work the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command and the word was proclaimed throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing for what they had brought was more than enough to do all the work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Do you remember art class when you were in elementary school? Uh, You would have that break in the middle of your day from math and and reading and science and focus, and you would get to go to the art room, and you would get to to color and draw and paint. You get your hands in some clay and to make some stuff. Oh, it was great to have art class in elementary school. I remember it. I remember how much I enjoyed it. I remember how much I enjoyed that moment in the day. And I see what my kids make now in art class, and I'm just absolutely amazed. Their art teacher um, just has these great ideas. And so Hunter brought home this picture of the Northern Lights that was just awesome. Kylie brought home a sculpture that looks amazing. They bring home this really cool stuff, and, and their creativity, their ideas just seem to flow out of it. I remember that great feeling, and you probably do too. I also remember the moment when it stopped, I'd gone into middle school, and my art teacher in middle school was less encouraging than he should have been. And I remember sitting in art class, working to draw one of those vantage point drawings that came down on the horizon. I was really giving it my best effort, and he walked by and looked at it and said, that's not right, and kept on going. I remember that moment because all of a sudden I realized that maybe I wasn't as good at this as I thought. I looked around at my classmates and realized that they were better than I was. And something of my creative spark died that day. I wonder why we begin to lose that. There was a study done that showed that when kids were young, they would create and paint and draw and make stuff. And if you have small children, your refrigerator is like a a walking art gallery to all the things that they make all the time. But as kids get older and progress throughout elementary school, they begin to realize that maybe somebody's better at it. And the creative juices begin to slow down. They begin to stop making and creating, instead comparing and judging themselves against each other. They don't see us as adults make and create very often. Mo Willems, who is a children's, children's author and illustrator, he wrote the, the Pigeon books. He's a fellow at uh, the, the Kennedy Center, says that kids have stopped being creative because they don't see adults do it. They're not sure that it's the right thing to do as you grow up. This morning, I want us to stop and think about the work of creativity. I want us to think about the work that we've been invited to do as creative people because I believe deeply that each of us are called to offer our creative gifts. I think that we each have been made to be creative and God has shaped us and formed in us something that is deeply creative. 
Now, this may seem like a a strange thing to say in this middle of a summer that is not what we expected, in a time when the world feels very dark and very big and very scary, the idea of creativity may not be the one that first comes to mind. We're not trying to thrive. It feels like we're often trying to survive in these days. And so creativity may not be your first go-to. You may hear me say that and say, Matt, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. That is frivolous stuff, and we don't have space for it in the world today. I am too busy adulting. You know what adulting is? Adulting is when you start to do those things that to your younger self seemed pretty boring. Our students talk about adulting a lot. It's the stuff of like paying your bills on time and eating salads. Like it's the stuff that doesn't seem as much fun. It's folding your laundry and running the errands. It's the stuff that you have to do to make life work. The other day, I was, I was like cleaning my cast iron pan, right? And I'm like scrubbing this thing out, and I'm seasoning it, and I realized how hardcore I was adulting in that moment. Like, because if you can take care of a cast iron pan, you have reached a certain level of adulthood, you know, they don't, they don't complain like kids, right? They don't like demand that you give them attention and they will go bad pretty easily. I've ruined more than one in my lifetime. But this one, I was like carefully seasoning it, making sure, and I was like, I've reached the max of adulting. Like this is, this is where it ends, you know? Sometimes it feels like we get deeply into the slog of everyday life that we miss out on the joys of creativity. I think that we have been called in these moments, in these difficult days, to be creative, to be people that create beauty in the midst of the ugliness, to be people that create peace in the midst of the chaos, to be people that create hope in the midst of despair. I think that we have been called to be creative in powerful ways. And I think the call to creativity is not frivolous. In fact, I think it is the divine work of God coming out through us. The God who created us, the God who made us, the God that breathed into us God's very breath continues to breathe into us this deep desire and ability to be creative. The the ability to create and be creative is the divine spark of God that shows up in our lives. It is the way that we reflect God to the world. It is one of the ways that we deeply join with God in God's work of renewing and restoring the world, of bringing about beauty and hope. Dorothy Sayers, in her book, Mind of the Maker, says it like this. The characteristic common to God and humankind is apparently that, the desire and ability to make things. The God who made us, the God who made the world, invites us to be people that make, to create, to be creative, to see a new way. When we practice creativity, when we engage in that discipline and in that work, we are joining deeply with God in the work of creating and recreating the world around us. Now you may say, man, I, I'm not creative. I just don't have it in me. I'm, I'm very set in my ways. Brene Brown says, there is no such thing as creative and non-creative people, only people who use their creativity and people who don't. Listen to that again. There is no such thing as creative and non-creative people, only people who use their creativity and people who don't. God has placed in you and all of us the gift of creativity, the gift of beauty, the gift of seeing things that, no, that do not yet exist. And God has given each of us this ability to practice and engage in creative work. And when we do that, that is one of the ways that we show that we are made in God's image. Because God is one who creates. From the very beginning of Scripture, God is in the business of creating. In Genesis 1, God is a spoken word artist, speaking poetry, speaking the words and the world into existence. God speaks and it becomes. God offers this poem that begins to create the world and make things right. 
Gordon Kaufman is a Mennonite theologian, and he says, you could even say this, in the beginning was creativity, and the creativity was with God, and the creativity was God. God creates with this power and purpose and energy. In Genesis 2, God changes genres. All of a sudden, God is a sculptor, delicately crafting humankind, breathing into us the breath of life. God is a master gardener, planting a place of beauty and peace. And we are reminded, like I often tell my friend Sven, that the the Bible begins and ends in a garden. There is something beauty, beautiful and creative about a garden. It is the place where we experience God's presence. And God is a master gardener. Throughout the stories, God continues to create a people. God shapes a people and calls them to be radical and countercultural. God makes a people who will be blessed to be a blessing to the world, who will engage the world around them, who will be a bear witness to God's goodness and God's work. God creates a people. God creates a new way. God continues to create the church. God creates and makes over and over and over again. So when we practice creativity, when we join that work with God, we are really joining God in what God is doing. It seems to me that God creates for several reasons. One, God creates to reveal God's self to the world. We talked about that several weeks ago when we talked about nature, that God creates to reveal God's self to the world. The created world around us is one of the ways that God desires to speak to us about the nature of who God is. But more than that, I have to wonder if God creates just because God enjoys doing it. Think about the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean. Things that for a long time remained unexplored and unseen. Their beauty and their creatures never witnessed by the human eye. God made that long before we saw it. I'm not sure God made it for us. I think God made it because God likes to make things. The very nature of God is one who is so deeply creative in so many ways. And so we, as God's created beings, we as those who carry the divine spark of God in us, we who have been made and shaped and formed in God's image are invited to join in God with this creative work. We're invited to join in God in this creative work because when we do so, it allows us to experience our giftedness and to share it with others. I have never preached from Exodus 35 before. Probably you've never heard a sermon from Exodus 35 before where Moses is, is planning this ways for the sanctuary to be built, this place of beauty, and he begins to call these artisans and he says, you have been given the divine gift. You have been given an ability to create and to make. You've been given an ability to, to bring, bring beauty into the world. So begin to do that. And, and so Bez's, Bezael does that and he gathers a holy ab with him and says, come on, let's begin to make. They begin to teach other people. And suddenly this creative venture is not just for them. The whole community gets involved. All of the people come so drawn by this creative work that they too want to have a part. And so even if they don't have the gifts and the arts to do it, they begin to bring their stuff. They begin to bring the things that they have, their gifts, their offerings. They bring it to the sanctuary so that the artisans can get paid and so the artisans can use what they have been offered to continue to create beauty. There is so much stuff that comes in that eventually they say, we have too much stuff. Tell the people to stop bringing us stuff. The creative nature is an ability to tap into our giftedness to use what God has given us for God's good purpose and to invite others to join us in that work. To create brings us incredible joy and it brings us incredible life. To practice creativity allows us to stop many of our daily routines and find a moment of solace. Things look different than what they have before. Father Richard Rohr, a contemplative, says that it is the work of writing and painting, it is the work of creating and making that allows us to be contemplative. Because something in that moment allows our brains to stop thinking about 
the struggles and the stress and to be open to a new way. I've been working to refinish some furniture. It's my creative outlet. I have an old table that was given to us. It's beat up, but it's got a lot of life in it. And so I go down to the basement and I begin to sand and sand and sand and stain and stain and stain. That break in the monotony of my day that break in the stress and slog of my day allows me to connect with God in ways I wouldn't otherwise. And often I have found that when I come upstairs from the sanding and the staining, there is an idea bubbling inside of me, something that that God is inviting me to be a part of that is not just the work of sanding and staining. There's an idea that God is trying to birth within me that is deeply connecting me to God and calling me to deeply connect with others. The work of creativity invites us to stop for a moment and to allow God to speak to us in ways that maybe we hadn't experienced before. And when we do that, when God begins to speak to us, when God begins to to grab our attention away from ourselves, we begin to find ways to partner with God in making all things right. You see, the creativity that we're invited to practice is not simply the creativity of, of the arts, although those are incredibly important, and the importance of bringing beauty into the world cannot be understated. The importance of bringing beauty into the world and encouragement to others cannot be understated. And so I think it's very, very important to understand that that's part of it. But part of the creativity that we're invited to engage with is this deeper sense of, of seeing the world around us for the ways that it is broken and hurting and engaging with God in creating new ways to bring about God's kingdom. We find creativity in the ways that we parent our children. We find creativity in the brokenness, in the problems of the world that seem big and hairy and scary, that we can begin to find a new way forward. We find creativity in the ways we learn to care for our community, in the places where people are hurting and offer some hope and healing. The creativity that we are invited to to engage with as we engage with God's work is transformative, life-changing stuff that engages with God in making all things right. Ron Finley is a gardener. He's a gardener in, in, in L.A., and right now he has a, a master class on the master class website about gardening. He started gardening because he understood that L.A. had places that were food deserts. A food desert is a place where there is no fresh food available. When people shop, they don't go to grocery stores. They go to convenience stores, and they, they buy chips and processed food. And Ron realized that there needed to be some fresh food available. So he began to plant gardens in the, the dirt strips alongside curbs. He began to plant gardens in the spaces that existed between the roads. It was illegal, and he was cited. And he kept doing it. And so a warrant was issued for his arrest. He fought the warrant. He went to City Hall and had the laws changed. And now he is this urban gardener who creates food and allows people to to eat fresh, healthy food. He calls himself the gangster gardener. And in his master class, when he talks about ways that you can begin to plan your garden, he just says, plant what you like. If you like purple flowers, plant purple flowers. Plant what brings you joy. There doesn't have to be a plan. There just has to be the stuff that you love that brings you life. Ron saw that there was a problem in his community. And using the creativity that he had been given, he found a way to address it. The creativity that we have been given is a gift that God invites us to use to engage with God in creating and recreating the world. The creativity that God has given us is a gift that God has given us to use to create beauty and space, to create life. The creativity that God has given us is a gift that God has given us to use that we, may, that we might make the world look a little more like heaven. Engage with God in the good work that God is doing to recreate and restore the world. 
There's another reason that creativity is such a powerful thing. Creativity makes us so deeply aware of our imperfections and our powerlessness. Because if you've ever tried to create something, there's a pretty good chance that it went wrong. Like there's a pretty good chance that the first effort, the second try, the third time, it just didn't go right. And even when you get done with it, you know the imperfections that are there. Last night, I was sanding on this furniture that I'm trying to, to refinish. I was just lightly sanding a polyurethane coat, and I realized that some of the stain had come off the end. I was so frustrated. I brought it upstairs and showed it to Beth and said, Look it, I, the, the stain came off the end. And she said, That's, that's okay. It just kind of makes it look weathered. Like, I, I like it. Which I thought was very nice of her. I'm not sure that I believed her. In this moment, I was so aware of my own imperfections and so aware of my own perfectionistic tendencies that say that everything has to just be so. That for, some, for something to be beautiful, it must be perfect. God convicted me and said, it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Sometimes our imperfections and our powerlessness as we live in a world that is so marked and out of our control, reminds us that God makes beauty out of broken things. It makes us come to grips with our own lack of ability and reminds us of the God who redeems and restores and brings beauty out of surprising places. What is it that God is asking you to create? How can you create beauty and peace? How can you see the world around you with different eyes than you've seen before to join with God in making all things right? How is God calling you to practice that divine gift? To join with God in creating. In the days and weeks to come, may we be called deeply into God's creative, recreative work. Let's pray. God, thank you for the ways that you offer us beauty and life. Thank you for the ways that you gift us with abilities, with skills and talents. Thank you for the ways that you have invited us to be creative. Help us to set aside our desire for perfectionism. Help us to set aside our desire to be in control and to lean deeply into what you have to offer. Help us to see the world in a different way, to envision a new reality, a different future than what we see now, to join with you in creating this new way, to join with you in making earth look a little more like heaven. Help us to be people that offer beauty and hope and peace into a world that desperately needs it. Thank you for the work that you do in us and through us. Thank you for the gifts you give. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's sing together as we continue to worship and offer our gifts to God.
Friends, I am deeply grateful for the gifts that so many offer. I'm deeply grateful for the creative gifts of those who are next to me that they've offered for us this morning. I'm deeply grateful for the many of you who have many different gifts that God continues to use to recreate and renew the world. Thank you for the ways that you allow God to use your creativity for God's good purposes. Thank you for the ways that you allow the goodness of God to shine through you as you seek to transform and renew the world. Thank you for the ways you offer beauty in so many ways. This week, find ways to continue to join in the work that God is doing to make things new, to recreate, and to bring hope in life. Go with that. Amen.